DxO have been winning fans around the globe with their photo processing apps PhotoLab and Pure Raw. Photographers have discovered that DxO have the best lens and camera correction profiles in the game, the best demosaic engine in the game, and the best AI denoise tool as well. So if you're interested in using PhotoLab for your raw photo processing and are wondering how easy it is to adapt to the app, I have some tips and advice that hopefully will ease the transition. Now I should state straight from the go that this is not a guide to processing raw photographs in PhotoLab. Instead, it's an explanation of some of the differences and how they might impact your processing workflow. Lightroom definitely has more features than PhotoLab, and you shouldn't consider switching if full-blown asset management, HDR, Pano, and AI masks are a must-have for you. PhotoLab is an app very much designed with photographic purists in mind, and its toolset reflects a more subtle method of processing raw photographs. That said, let's jump straight into the first point of difference. Straight out of the box, photographs simply tend to look better in PhotoLab than in Lightroom. This is for a couple of reasons. One, DxO have a superior demosaicing algorithm. Two, they have better lens profiles. And three, they have a unique ultra-wide gamut working color space that preserves more colors. All of Lightroom's camera hardware correction tools are located within a single lens correction tab. Meanwhile, in PhotoLab, more comprehensive profile corrections are distributed across the Light, Detail, and Geometry tabs. Automatic vignetting correction is located at the bottom right of the Light tab. I have this enabled by default and I never touch it. In the Detail tab, you'll find the Lens Softness Correction tool and the Chromatic Aberration tool, both of which I also leave enabled all the time. I never touch the Lens Softness tool, but occasionally access the Chromatic Aberration tab to enable the purple fringing correction if a shot needs it. Finally, in the Geometry tab, you can find the Distortion and Volume Deformation tools, both of which I leave to DxO's excellent automatic profiling. In short, much like you never really touch Lightroom's Lens Correction tools, you can simply leave PhotoLab's more comprehensive tools enabled too. Obviously, the core of any raw processing is going to revolve around those familiar basic adjustments, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Firstly, PhotoLab splits the main exposure slider off into its own tab in order to accommodate four correction profiles, which are mainly of use when recovering blown out highlights. Secondly, PhotoLab 7 has a deceptively powerful slider called Smart Lighting, which makes adjustments to brightness and contrast in a way that's often tricky to execute with the regular sliders. Think of Smart Lighting as your go-to tool when you have a challenging dynamic range in your image, more specifically, one with lots of heavy shadow that you'd like to bring out. If you're processing landscapes with the Smart Lighting tool, then you want the uniform option. And if your photograph contains people, then you should use the spot weighted option. Simply dial in the desired intensity of the effect using the modes or set it manually using the slider. The familiar basic sliders for highlights and shadows can be found in the selective tone tab. These work in exactly the same way as Lightroom, except for one notable difference. PhotoLab has a mid-tone slider and only a black slider, not a complementary white slider. The lack of a white slider is a contentious issue among PhotoLab users, particularly those who've moved from Lightroom. DxO's methodology is to take a more nuanced and subtle approach. Based on their official posts on the subject, they feel that the white slider is a blunt tool and you can achieve better results with highlights, midtones, and shadow sliders. When it comes to enhancing details in the images, there are some key differences between Lightroom and PhotoLab with both the traditional and the AI tools. In PhotoLab, the micro contrast slider serves a similar purpose to Lightroom's clarity tool, 
enhancing details in the mid-tones through local contrast adjustments. Following the less is more maxim of post-processing, you'll typically want to try micro contrast before the main contrast slider since it's a more subtle effect. The dehaze slider in Lightroom can be useful for getting rid of atmospheric effects caused by mist or smoke, but Photolab's equivalent, Clearview Plus, is more powerful. While dehaze does what it says on the tin, Clearview Plus is more nuanced and balances contrast and sharpness alongside the removal of haze or fog. In short, you'll get less heavy-handed results with Clearview. While it's not specifically designed for the task, Clearview is a great way of adding clarity to skies, even when it's not hazy. When used sparingly, it will nicely lift edge definition on clouds. When it comes to adjusting the color in your photographs, there are some differences in names, but both apps offer broadly the same toolset. The color mixer in Lightroom Classic lets you adjust hue, saturation and luminance across eight channels. In Photolab, this is accomplished using the HSL tool. Adobe recently added a point color tool to Lightroom to enable targeted color changes, but this is already built into Photolab's HSL tool. Simply select the eyedropper, select your color, and then either shift the color wheel clockwise or anti-clockwise to adjust hue or use the saturation and luminance sliders as required. There is currently no direct equivalent of Lightroom's color grading in Photolab, though you can of course get similar results with a combination of tools, mainly the aforementioned HSL. The quickest way to tweak or indeed dramatically alter the color in your photograph is to use a preset. In Lightroom, to apply a filter, you'd use either the Presets tab or the Profile Browser or a combination of the two. Meanwhile, if you have the Elite version of Photolab, you can use the DxO Film Pack. The Film Pack is actually the least cheesy preset system I've used, and let me tell you, I've tried a few over the years. If you want a more subtle change, then Photolab does support LUTs. You can apply a LUT using any .cube file, and dial in the intensity you require. If you've moved over to Photolab from Lightroom, then there is one tool you're definitely gonna have to rethink, and that is masks. Adobe have gone all in on AI masks in Lightroom, and bloody good they are too. Meanwhile, DxO decided to stick with their human-driven toolset in Photolab 7. Yes, you, fleshy human bipedal entity. You have to make the masks in Photolab, not only overlords the AI. Don't panic though, it's not going back to simple gradient masks, but you are gonna have to do a bit more and hit a button labeled sky. Sorry, DxO use a technology called Viewpoint, which they acquired when they bought the fabled Nick collection of plugins from Google. You can definitely create accurate masks, but in order to do so, you have to learn to balance the chroma and luma sliders which affect the mask sensitivity. And just so we're singing from the same hymn sheet here, chroma is a fancy schmancy way of saying saturation and luma is a fancy schmancy way of saying brightness. Why don't they just say saturation and brightness? Because they're French and that's how they roll. So to finesse a gradient mask, for instance, you simply drag down to create the boundaries of the mask and then use the chroma slider to select a range of pixels with similar saturation levels and the luma slider to select a range of pixels with a similar brightness level. Basically, it's a little dance you have to do to get your mask looking the way you want. But the good news is that once you wrap your head around it, it's a surprisingly powerful tool. Uh, don't get me wrong, I definitely think DxO should hop on the AI mask bandwagon, but Viewpoint is a powerful alternative once you get used to it. To create large masks, you'll want to use the control line option. This works along similar lines to a linear gradient, but you can tweak it to include just the areas you want with the aforementioned chroma and luma sliders. The control point option works along similar lines to object selection. If you place it on something like a tree, it'll use edge detection, color and brightness differences to select said tree, and then you can finesse the selection with the chroma and luma sliders. Luminosity masks are probably my favorite of the Photolab masking options. 
enabling you to select very specific regions of pixel brightness. You can use luminosity masks for any part of the image, but of course they're most useful for targeting highlights and shadows at either end of the bright and dark luminance range. You can pull back blown out highlights, for instance, in a specific part of the photo by clicking on one of the 10 zones and then use the selective tone tools to adjust. Alongside a simple brush and eraser tool, there is also an auto mask option, which works along the same lines as the brush and auto mask option in Lightroom. Without doubt, the most powerful tool in Photolab 7 is the suite of denoising technologies located in the detail tab. DxO's denoising capabilities currently exceed those of Adobe's in Lightroom, and output far and away the most nuanced noise removal in the game. In Lightroom, you get one option, the Enhance tool and a slider to a control strength. In Photolab, you have four options, High Quality, Prime, Deep Prime, and Deep Prime XD. For landscape photographs, the Deep Prime option is usually the best bet. It's the most well-rounded of the four options and does the best job of balancing noise removal with detail retention. If you have a very noisy image, such as an astro photograph that you shot at very high ISO, then XD is your go-to. Do note that when using these denoising tools in Photolab, you don't get a live preview in the small window, just a small preview under the buttons. This is no different than Lightroom, of course, which displays a small region in the preview window in the Enhanced Details box. If you want to see what the whole image looks like with the Dean Noise applied, then you need to save the photo out. There are, of course, other features that Adobe Lightroom Classic has, which Photolab 7 does not. This is mainly because DxO have chosen to focus on the raw processing side rather than that all-in-one design that Adobe have opted for. For starters, there is no HDR or Pano Merge tool built into Photolab, so you'll have to use a third-party app for that. I bought PT GUI many years ago and use it for many of my panoramic stitches in preference to Lightroom because Particularly with situations such as large aerial pano shot with my drone, Lightroom struggles to knit it all together. PT GUI is the single best pano stitcher you can buy. It's a great option to use alongside Photolab, but it is a bit expensive. For HDR and a whole heap more, you can't go past the HDR FX plugin, which comes with the Nick collection, also now by DxO. Unlike Lightroom's HDR Merge, which only has basic ghosting options, HDRFX is a full-blown app with intricate granular control over your images. It's the perfect accompaniment to Photolab. Finally, Photolab does not have any catalog functionality, so you can either manage your files natively using your Mac or Windows file management, or use a third-party app. If you want a good free option for asset management, an Adobe Bridge is a solid choice. Yes, it is free. And if you want more bells and whistles, then Peak 2 by the French company Syme comes highly recommended. Links in the description. We'd be here all week if I talked about every difference between Lightroom and Photolab, but I reckon the ones I've mentioned are the big ones. Personally speaking, I'm happy to use Lightroom and Photolab because I think both apps have their advantages and disadvantages, but if you are considering switching from Adobe to DxO, hopefully now you've got a clear review of the adaptions you'll have to make to your processing workflow. And that will do us for this video, guys. If you got value from this content, then please do hit the old like button down there and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Until the next time, guys, ta-ta.